Hey guys, what's up? Jessica Cabasi here. In today's video, I'm going to be going over Canon's newest camera. It's the Canon EOS R. It's a full frame mirrorless. I have the camera right here and I'm going to be going over the actual body, the lenses that it comes with. I'm going to be comparing it to my 5D Mark III with its lenses. I'm also going to be showing you guys example images that I took with this camera and I'm going to be telling you guys what I like about it and what I don't really care for about it. So before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know a couple things that I want to know if I'm watching a video like this. This uh, video was not sponsored by Canon. I am a Canon brand ambassador, but I'm going to be completely honest and, you know, I'm going to give my own opinion on this camera. No one asked me to make this. Canon actually flew me and other photographers out to Hawaii to, it was, it was actually pretty secretive. I didn't really know what it was about, but they invited us all over there and it turns out that it was the press event for this camera. Again, I had no idea. I wasn't really sure what to expect. Uh, you know, it was a paid trip and they gave us the camera to use for six weeks. So the example images you're gonna see through this video are the ones that Canon set up for all of us after they gave us this camera. Just letting you guys know, cause I wanna be honest with you guys. Yeah, so anyways, let's get started with the video. So I wanna do a quick unboxing or unbackpacking of the backpack that they gave us after the press event with all the stuff in it. So the first thing that was included in the bags, obviously the camera body, this is the EOS R. It's pretty lightweight, and I'm gonna do a comparison to my 5D after this, but I just wanted to show you guys how this looks. So we have the card slot right here. It uses one of these cards, as you will see, and it does only have one card slot. I know a lot of you guys were asking, and some of some people were upset that it only had one card slot. I don't know, I don't <laughs> I didn't come up with this, but I mean, I can see why it, two car slots would be important. And then here's the back. And one nice thing is that you can bring out the screen, you know, flip it, which is really great as a wedding photographer if, if you're getting an aerial shot or if you're short like me and you want to lift up the camera. It's really responsive, which I like, the touch screen. And also it has a touch bar up here, which is fully customizable. I know that you can customize it and you can just slide it back and forth as like an easy way to get to ISO or you know f-stop, whatever you want. You can put whatever you want. So this is the top portion of the camera. As you can see, there's a screen, there's the dials. So during the press event, they said there's a lot less buttons on here. I don't know how to feel about that. I'm a buttons, I'm a buttons girl. I'm all about the buttons, pressing stuff and messing up everything on my camera. <laughs> the fact that now I have to do more, like, I have to sit in touch, I don't, I don't know, I'm still stuck in the 90s or the 2000s, whatever one applies. So what else was in the backpack? The 50 1.2 lens. So we got the 24 to 105 lens as well, and it came with a lens hood. And I like the lens hoods on these ones because they have a little button, which if you press, you can kind of lock and unlock which again is really nice if you're like me and everything is just dropping from the sky and cracking and falling. So another question you guys were asking is if you guys can use your EF lenses with this new R series camera and you can, but you will need a mount and they did include this for us. Also another good thing is that it still uses the same charger and the same battery as the 5D. That's great, you don't have to get any new batteries, chargers, stuff like that. So keep collecting those batteries guys and the chargers that we all lose. And then they gave us this backpack and I don't know how they put everything so organized in there but whoever did that needs an award. I mean, can, can we just know who it is? Cause I'm gonna be friends with that person so they can come help me organize my closet. I'm struggling. So you're probably wondering the price of all this, which is why I saved this paperwork for you guys, which I would usually not save because I graduated from school 20,000 years ago. The actual body itself, is $2,299. So the 50 1.2 is uh, $2,300, uh, which is fine because I I don't even need both of my kidneys. <laughs> it's a joke because I was gonna sell one of them to buy the lens because it's expensive. Okay, I really have to work on my jokes. So now that you guys saw what was in my backpack, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a comparison between the Canon EOS R and the Canon 5D Mark III. So one of the main questions you guys have been asking me is how does this feel in your hand? And I know I don't have a lens on this. I'm gonna put a lens on this 
in a second, but just holding the camera body and then holding this camera body, the 5D Mark III, I can already tell this is a lot lighter and this is a little bit more bulkier. Okay, so as you guys can see, the buttons on the left side of this camera are no longer there on the EOS R. I mean, there's still the play button, the trash can, which is my favorite button. You can't, you gotta have it, you know? It's gonna be on there forever, it's iconic. The trash can. <laughs> I mean, you guys can see the differences on this camera. I'm going to show you guys some clips and you can kind of just see for yourself really the differences. So this is the 51.2 lens, it's an EF lens, and then this lens is the 51.2, but it's for the EOS R series. So again, this is the mirrorless one. As you can see, the size difference is, you know, pretty substantial. So this one's the old one, this one's the new one. Look, I know they were trying to add new features and stuff, but this is heavy. So I feel like even though the body was light, I mean, this is still, it's like the same thing, same weight as the 5D Mark III. Maybe I'm wrong, but as I'm holding it, it doesn't really make a difference. So to me, the weight and how heavy it is, I mean, listen, I've been holding <laughs> heavy cameras that weigh more than me my whole career doing photography. So it's not like the weight really made a difference. So one thing people kept telling me that they really liked about this camera is the fact that if you open this up, you can see that the sensor is protected by a cover. It actually closes. And I'm gonna show you guys my 5D Mark III. Same thing, I'm gonna open it up and you guys can see that this one, the sensor is open and exposed and this one is closed. So why does this matter? In the event that you're outside changing lenses, you're gonna obviously have to open this up to change lenses. Something flies in there, you know, it's raining and something gets in there then your sensor will be exposed and you can damage it. But if the sensor is closed, then you know that goes down significantly and it will stay clean all the time. So that's something that people were mentioning to me that I would, I just want to tell you guys. Let's go ahead and close the sensor before everything flies in. We can want that to happen. So you guys were asking about the weight of the camera. You guys were interested in knowing, is it lighter than the Mark III? Is it worth switching? Like what are the biggest differences? So let's get into the weight first. I'm holding both cameras using the same lens. This one seems a little bit heavier, feels pretty solid. Like uh, this one, I'm about to get arthritis. This one, I'm not gonna get arthritis until like later in my life, you know? They're, they're pretty close, but this one just feels a little bit lighter. One other thing I wanted to mention that I wrote down is there is a little ring on the top right here that is not for zoom, it's actually to customize whatever you want you can have this control the ISO so if you're shooting and you don't want to go ahead and keep changing ISO you can simply you know move this back and forth and it will decrease and increase ISO really easily as you're shooting some other things that you guys wanted me to talk about the focusing methods so the first one that they have is basically face tracking I try to use this but I have trust issues <laughs> do I trust all the time that the camera is gonna get the face of a person, especially if I'm shooting a wedding. I don't know, so I'm probably not gonna be using that mode very often. And then we have the 1.AF. We have an expand AF area. We have expand AF area around, which is basically what I had on the 5D uh, Mark III. So that's the one that I was choosing when I was shooting. We have the zone AF large zone AF vertical, and then large zone AF horizontal. Another thing worth mentioning is you can also select the focus point by clicking on the screen, it's touch screen. And another really cool thing, which I actually did like, is if I put my eye up to the EVF, the electronic viewfinder, and I set it up on my screen where I can literally just, you know, put my eye, and then I can select my focus point by touching the screen as my eye is on there and it will track wherever my finger is. So that is also another option. So um, dynamic range on this camera is actually really great, especially just on JPEG. So I had to shoot everything on JPEG and I was kind of scared. I'm like, oh, JPEG, like how am I gonna work with this? I usually sh shoot in RAW and I color edit in RAW, but oh my God, I was so shocked, you guys. I took these into Photoshop and 
I swear to you, like details on the sky, I was able to bring them back in, in this JPEG. I was shook, okay? I was, my, the coloring was amazing. The pictures were so sharp and so crispy. Oh my God, I was sitting there like, I don't even need my glasses. I'm like, I'm legally blind, but I'm not today because I can see the crispiness from here. So I was pleasantly surprised by how sharp and how beautiful the images turned out after color grading, you know, as a JPEG. So I was very, very, very impressed. Quality is definitely there in terms of the, you know, the photos and the sharpness. So I'm gonna be showing you guys a couple of photos that I took using this camera in different scenarios, different lighting. So I hope you guys like them. Stuff I don't really like or care for about this camera. I think that there is too much customization and this is speaking as a person who is extremely indecisive. Like I can't, I don't even know what I wanna eat for breakfast. Like do I want a bagel? Do I want an English muffin? Who's, who knows, who knows? It takes me 30 minutes to find out. When you take the picture and it loads, when you, like when you go to take the picture and you finish taking it, it takes a second or to, to load everything, it's kind of laggy a little bit. Again, those are just first impressions and a couple other people were saying that. The focusing though is just the biggest obstacle for me. How I focus properly and in the fastest way possible, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna have to keep testing this out because I'm not sure. So one of the questions you guys were asking is will this be replacing your 5D? It's not gonna be replacing my 5D Mark III. I'm still keeping that camera. I'm still gonna be using it the same way I use it. So I'm not gonna be switching just now. I still, I'm gonna keep my 5D Mark III. I absolutely love that camera. You know, I've been using it for so long and I, I do like the pictures that it takes. For this camera, it's just gonna be like a supplemental camera. Uh, I still do need to learn how to use it a little bit more. I, am I gonna tell you guys like, oh, I 100% recommend it. I honestly wouldn't because I haven't been using it for that long. I'm not gonna recommend a camera to you guys that I don't even, I'm not even really comfortable using in every situation yet. Like I'm not fully knowledgeable about it. So I'm gonna hold off on the recommendation. I will say I like it so far. I'm excited to use it. So I mean, take that as you will. Also learning curve for a new photographer. If you're using auto features and everything's auto and you don't really mind, I mean, it's a, it's a good camera. I think you'll have no problems with it, but if you're someone like me and you do wanna customize it and you're using manual features and you're using it for things such as weddings and fashion shoots, stuff like that, it might be a little bit more difficult. I mean, I'm getting a little frustrated with certain things. Again, the focusing, I just have to keep bringing it up because it's been bothering me. Also leave your thoughts and comments below on this video and let me know what you guys think of this camera. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys later.